All right, guys, here's the SketchUp video as promised. This is not going to be so much of a sketch, like how SketchUp works. Um, there are a lot of other videos that cover that really, really well. And I don't have the patience to sit through those without falling asleep. So I'm just gonna start drawing something and I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And you can follow along. It'll be a short video, easy to follow. From there, it, you should have enough of the basics to start playing around on your own and figuring it out for yourself. That's what I did. And there's a lot of features that SketchUp does that we don't necessarily need. Uh, at least I don't. So I'll show you what I use, how I do it. And if you have any feedback, let me know. A, uh, professional CAD person. I just know how to use it for what I need it for. Let's just jump right into it. We're gonna go ahead and go to SketchUp. I have SketchUp Pro. I recommend you get SketchUp Pro. The only reason I recommend that is because I think the new SketchUp is web-based and I personally don't like the web-based version. So this is the professional version. I'm gonna go, here's SketchUp. We're gonna go File, New from Template. Okay, um, I use Woodworking Inches. First thing I'm going to do is go to Windows, Model Info. I'm gonna change the precision. It's under Units here. I'm gonna change the precision to a 16th of an inch. I'm gonna enable Snapping at a 16th of an inch as well because that's typically what I work in within a 16th of an inch. So I don't need it to be a 64th. From there, I'm gonna go to Camera and then we're gonna go to Standard Views and then I'm gonna go to Top. Um, this is where I like to start from. From here, I'm gonna draw a square. It's a square tool. We're gonna type in 84 inches, comma, space, 84 inches, enter. Then what we get is our square. We're making a bed, by the way. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select this. I'm going to use the offset tool. We're gonna to grab the edge and we're going to pull it in eight inches. All right, now I'm going to delete the center and we're gonna use the push pull tool, which is here. And we're going to lift this up four and a quarter of an inch. If you're wondering where I'm coming up with these dimensions, it's because I have already made this bed and I'm going off of dimensions that I, I made for it. So that's where those numbers are coming from. This is the orbit tool. Also, I'm working on a MacBook Air. I probably mentioned that and I'm on a, a laptop and I don't have a mouse or anything. So I'm just finger, finger clicking it. All right, so from here we want to we're gonna use the offset tool again. These four lines. I'm holding shift and I am clicking the lines that I want an offset for. Then I'm gonna click the offset tool. You can grab a corner or a side, click on that and drag it out the distance that you need. We are gonna do three quarters of an inch. This is going to be the lip in which the slats sit on. From here, we're gonna push pull this tool here. We're gonna highlight that lip we just made and we're gonna pull it down three quarters of an inch. Okay, so now we got a ledge all the way around the platform bed. From there, we are gonna set a guide point using the measuring tape. We're gonna set a guide point down from the rabbited edge of an inch. Okay, you can see the guide point is right there. And what I do is I click on the corner and I drag in the direction that I want to go. Make sure you're on the line that you need to be on. I just type in half inch, enter, and then it takes it right to where I need it to be. So now what we're going to do is we are going to use the orbit tool and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna highlight these four lines. I'm gonna do the select tool, click this one. We are going to select this one. I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna orbit around to the back one, which is here. Zoom in, hold shift, select that one. And then I'm gonna orbit back to my guide point, which is right here. I'm going to use, okay, so what I'm gonna do now, the four lines are selected that I want. I'm gonna do Command C, Command V. And what that's gonna do is give me a copy of those four lines that I highlighted. I um, only want, I'm gonna use the guide point as a reference of where I'm gonna drop this. So I'm gonna drop it out here so it's not touching anything. I'm gonna grab this corner, click it, drag it over to my guide point, we'll snap to it, then that's it. Okay, from here, we are gonna use the push-pull tool and we're gonna push this back seven and a quarter. I'm gonna push this back seven and a quarter. I'm using the orbit tool. See these guys here? I'm gonna use the push-pull tool, push this back seven and a quarter inch, enter. Seven and a quarter inch, enter, okay. So here we are with our basic box. From here, I'm not planning on building off of this rendering. Um, if you guys want to see the way I make a build sheet, it's pretty different and I'll, I can do a separate video on that. This is just something that I'm gonna present to the customer. So from here, I'm gonna draw some fake miter lines here. Got a miter line there. Let the pencil snap to the corner and we'll snap to the other corner, enter. Then the customer can see that there are going to be miters there. Okay, from here, we're gonna make this a component. The way you do that is you can either triple click it and it'll highlight everything or you can just drag over it. 
and it'll highlight everything from there. Two finger click, make component. I don't waste my time naming these because it doesn't matter. I used to and then I realized that it never benefited me in any way. So we're just gonna hit enter. Okay, from here we have a component. What that means now is I can click on this and it's gonna highlight the whole thing, not just the edge that I'm clicking on or the face that I'm clicking on. That's important because the next thing we're going to do here is we're gonna draw a rectangle that we need to move separate from it. All right, back at it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our runner. So select the rectangle tool. We're gonna to go to the corner here. We're gonna drag this down. This is 69 and a half inches. So we're gonna type in 69 and a half by four, but get it in the direction that you need it to be first. Can't actually see that. So I, I'm gonna hit escape to deselect what I was doing. And I'm gonna use the orbit tool to get it, get this moved over to where I can actually see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go back here again, zoom in to the corner, click on that, zoom out, and then I'm going to make sure that it's going right where I want it to be. And I'm gonna type in at this point, I don't need to drag it all the way over, I'm just gonna type in 69 and a half, comma, space, four inches, enter. Now from here, I'm gonna use the push-pull tool and I'm going to click the face and drag it up. What I want it to do is be the same dimension as the top of the bed, so all I need to do is highlight one of these lines here. It'll snap to it, and then I'm gonna click on that line. Now that's the same. From here, I'm going to triple click this. I'm going to grab this, I'm gonna zoom out a little, and I'm gonna grab the center point of the runner, zoom out, and I'm going to drag it until it snaps to the midpoint in component one, okay? We're, just, we're gonna set that right there. Then I'm gonna go underneath and I'm going to use the select tool to get clicked off of that. I'm going to use the rectangle tool, the orbit tool. I'm gonna flip around to the bottom here, zoom in, go back to the rectangle tool. I'm gonna grab the corner, make sure not to grab this edge. You need to zoom all the way in and grab that edge. Zoom out, zoom into this edge and make sure it snaps to the correct location. There's an X to identify the intersection. Click that, so now we have another square there and we are going to pull that down and I want it to snap flush with the bottom of the bed. So I'm gonna just find the edge here and then click. So what that has done is get, that has created a rabbited long runner for us. So we're going to triple click this, double click, make component and enter. Now that is its own component. Now I'm gonna use the orbit tool and zoom out, see what we have. Okay, so now we need to add rabbits to that long runner. So I'm going to click on this, I'm gonna double click on it, I'm gonna do edit component, and I'm going to zoom in here, grab the rectangle tool, I'm going to zoom and click there, zoom out and click the bottom to where I want my rabbit to be. I'm gonna use the push pull tool, I'm going to click this face, I'm gonna pull it out, three quarters of an inch is what I'm typing, enter, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Orbit around, rectangle tool, I click here, zoom in so I can make sure I'm snapping to the right location. Push pull, grab that face, pull it out. I'm gonna type in three quarters of an inch, enter. Now I can use the that tool and just click off orbit again, see where we're at. Okay, that all looks good so far. So now let's start making our slat. For our slat, we're gonna use the rectangle tool again. Go down to the corner here. I'm gonna pull this out. I want these slats to be three inches wide and it looks like you can see down here in the dimensions bar that it is 32 and three quarters of an inch from corner to corner. So I'm gonna type in 32 and three quarters of an inch, comma, comma, space, three inches, and I'm going to use the push-pull tool. I'm gonna to click the face and drag it up. I can type in three quarters of an inch because I know that's what it is, or I can just snap to one of these lines. Now that that's done, select tool, triple click, double click, make component, enter. Okay, start from here. I'm gonna to go to the move tool. I'm gonna to go to the bottom corner of my component. I'm gonna select option. Then I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag in the direction. I can let go of the option button. I don't need to keep holding it. I'm gonna drag in the direction that I wanna go, staying snaps to my line. And I want these to be about a half inch apart. So I'm gonna type in three and a half inches, enter. And that gives me my next slot with the spacing that I need. But instead of doing that over and over and over again until I fill this up, I'm just gonna come down here to this entry bar um, and I'm going to delete that. And I'm gonna type in, I know there's probably 20 slats. I'm, I'm gonna type in times 20 enter. So now we can use the orbit tool, zoom out, and you can see that I was one too much. So we'll use the select tool, select that last slot, 
and just hit the delete button and that's good to go orbit tool okay now i'm gonna select all of those slats we'll select this 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 you can do them individually like that or you can just click on the first one and drag this up the only thing you need to be careful about is sometimes when you do that you might have highlighted something else beneath it it doesn't look like we did so since those slots are all selected we're going to do command c command v that's a copy and paste shortcut and we are going to just drag it over here to the corner it doesn't look like it snapped to the right location so i'm going to use the orbit tool come over here it did not snap to the right location so i'm going to use the move tool again i'm going to select the corner and i'm going to drag it down until it snaps to the right location and that's it there's your slot okay now we're going to draw the nightstands that attach to the side so we're going to come over here to the side i'm using the orbit tool and zooming in with my two fingers and i'm going to grab the rectangle tool again and we're going to pull this out this looks like it's four and a quarters so we're going to type in 14 inches comma space four and a quarter inches and we are going to pull this out 24 inches there's one of them we're going to orbit tool down to the bottom zoom out orbit zoom back in sometimes it's easier to use this move tool then we're going to go to the select tool and we're going to click these four lines not the bed not the face the line once those four lines are selected we're going to use the offset tool click the edge drag it in type in three quarters of an inch enter then we're going to use a push pull tool and we're going to bring this up three and a quarters of an inch that is pretty much it so now we're going to make this a component triple click double click make component enter then we're just going to while this is selected command c command v that's going to copy and paste and we're going to drag one to the other side i just like to set it near it and i zoom in and i pick the point that i want it to index from there we go now we have our nightstands okay from here we need to work on the bottom of the bed now to make the floating platform so instead of trying to work from underneath if you're working upside down the orbiting can get a little funny so i just like to flip the bed temporarily so i highlight the whole bed and then if you double click it you can go down to flip along and we are going to flip along the blue act flip it upside down there you go orbit tool now i want to work on the platform so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the rectangle tool again we're going to go to this corner down here i'm going to click on that corner zoom out go down here snaps to the right side okay so now that's going to be the start of our platform now that i know exactly that that that's in the right position i'm going to hide the bed so i'm going to Click on the bed, probably be easier to highlight everything, and then deselect what I just drew. And then I'm once that's deselected, I'm going to use Command E, and that hides everything that was selected. From here, I'm going to select this just by dragging, using the select tool and dragging my mouse over my object. And we are going to use the offset tool again, and we're going to bring this out three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch, enter. And then I can delete the inside. We don't need this face. And then I'm going to unhide the bed. The way you do that is Command Shift E. That unhides everything that you just hid. Then we'll use the orbit tool and we'll zoom in. We'll use the push pull tool and we'll pull the plywood platform out. And I'm going to snap to this face because this is this edge here is what I want to start with. So we're going to snap there. Now we know the bottom's flush. And then now it just comes down to how much the bed is sitting off the ground. This specific bed sits off of the ground four and a quarter, four and one quarter of an inch. So we are going to grab the edge here and we're going to pull it up an additional. I'm going to start going in the direction that I want to go in and then I'm just going to type in four and a quarter inch, enter. And then we are going to use the select tool, triple click it, double click, make component, enter. Now I need to add a vertical piece to run down the center of this so this is how i'm going to do it i'm going to use the rectangle tool i'm going to zoom in like here i'm going to pull this down i'm going to use three quarters of an inch material and this is seven and a quarter tall so i'm going to type in three quarters of an inch comma space seven and a quarter inch enter then i'm going to use the push pull tool i'm going to grab this face and i'm going to pull it i'm going to zoom out so i can see and i'm just going to snap to the inner line on the then we can use a select tool triple click this double click make component enter and then we are going to zoom out zoom back in grab the push pull tool and what i want to do here is i want to grab i don't want to snap to one of the sides i want to snap to the center so we'll grab that zoom out and then we're going to pull it over until it snaps to the center of the inside of this box 
Okay, that's pretty much sums up the bed. So what we're going to do now is we have this center part of the plywood and this piece that we need to, they're, they're essentially one piece, so we are going to double click and we're gonna make those a group. So now when you click off those and click back on, it'll highlight the whole piece. Now we're gonna zoom out. We're gonna highlight the entire thing. We're gonna double click and we're gonna flip back to the way it was. So along the blue axis, there we go. And from here, I like to orientate the drawing and then give it a floor and a wall. Let's just do it here. This is just personal preference. There's no specific reason why this needs to happen. I'll just bring it there. And I'm gonna click off of this. I'm gonna orbit around. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the rectangle tool an arbitrary location. I'm gonna pull that down six inches. And then I'm gonna pull this out 20 feet, not inches. Enter and do the same thing on all sides. 20 feet, enter, 20 feet, enter, and 20 feet. So now I'm gonna zoom out. Now I got my floor. Now I wanna add a wall behind it. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna make the floor a component so it doesn't get stuck to the wall. So we'll triple click the floor, double click, make component, enter. Then I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool I'm going to draw just on the back face of this because I want the bed to look like it's up against the wall. I'm going to pull it out four inches, four inches enter, and then I'm going to grab the face of the side and we can pull that out, whatever we need. We'll just call it 10 feet. I'm going to orbit down to the bottom and I'm going to use the push-pull tool and pull the bottom down. It snaps to the floor. I'm going to go to the other side. We'll bring this out. 10 feet, and then I'm gonna grab this and I'll just bring this up 96 inches. These are all just arbitrary numbers. If you know the dimensions of the customer's room, you can actually put them in there, which is what I normally do. And then I'm gonna triple click, double click, component, and we have a wall. Now we're gonna use the paint tool. I'm gonna go to the colored pencils. I'm gonna select lead black. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm going to select the plywood box because I've wanted to paint that black. So it kind of disappears under the bed from here. I will go to the textures. We can do wood. Um, let's just say we wanna do walnut. And you can edit these and change these. I don't know if these are the stocks. I might have changed some of them. That's kinda of ugly, so I'm gonna use this one instead. It looks a little bit better. So that's, I want all that to be walnut. But the slats are actually gonna be made out of alder. So I don't wanna individually click each slat and change the color. So I'm just gonna click on one and then double click it, edit component. And since these were all made from one, if you change one, it changes all of them. So we're gonna go back to the paint tool and we'll select a lighter color wood. And we actually want to use a select tool and triple click on that and then go back to the paint tool and then color it. That way it gets all edges. Now you can go back to the select tool and zoom out and then click off and there you go. It's all colored and... Okay, from here, I'm gonna close this, get that out of the, our screen. You can play around with some cool things to show your client and kind of wow the client. If you go to window, go down to styles and from styles, you can, these are all the default styles. You can get out of that and go into something like color sets and then use one of those or even better, you can go to assorted styles. These are really cool shading ones. Sometimes if you have a lot going on in a rendering, it can look pretty ugly. So if you, if you use something that makes it a little bit more abstract, the customer can use their imagination and kind of fill in the gaps, um, can save you sometimes. There's also, if you're into making it look like you hand drew it, there's some options in here for that as well. So that, that can be fun. That can be fun to mess with. We'll go back to default styles, put it back on the standard one. And one more thing I wanna show you is, um, if we go to view, you can turn on shadows. And then if you go to window, you can go down here to shadows again, and then you can adjust the time of day um, or even the date and get it to kinda look however you want it to look. When you see a shadow that you like, you can just click off of that. And from here, if I wanted to show this to the customer, I would get it in a position that I like. Pretty cool there. And I'm gonna go into view. 
the animation, add scene, and that is now my first scene. You can do add, and then you can orbit around to where you want your next scene to be. Let's just say we wanted to show kind of an isometric side view. We can go to, I'm double clicking, then I'm gonna hit update. And then let's go around to the other side. The bed. Maybe we wanna be a little bit lower. I'm gonna double click next to these and then add. And then maybe I want to get a little bit more in on the shelf and then double click here, add. Okay, so now let's see what we got. If you double click this and then you hit play animation, it's going to show you all of those over and over again. So from here you can get a screen recording and then you can send that to your customer. One other thing you can do to kind of help, if you, if you want it to stop, just click on one of them, click on one of them and it'll stop. Uh, I don't like to see my axes or my guide points if you did any measuring. So if you go to view, you can turn off axes. You don't have those lines running through there. And you can also turn off your guides, which I don't think I have any in there, so you're not gonna see a difference there, but a guide is when you're measuring. So if we turn the guides back on and I take a measurement, from the side here that's a guide so if you don't want to see those you can just turn it off okay one last thing is dimensions this is the dimensions tool you can select points and drag up or down or away and when you see that it's in a position that you like you can leave it there and you can grab another point this is great for showing clients what you got going on make sure that you have the right measurements and the last thing you can do if you want to send a quick shot over to a client and make sure that everything is looking right what i do is i use if you have an apple you can hit command shift four and then it'll give you this little target thing you can click on a corner and then you can drag i'm holding the button down and dragging it to where i want it and you can kind of pick what you like and let go and then it gives you a screenshot and then you can send it with this little tab here and you can get a couple different quick things for you so that's a that's my video um i don't build off of these sheets i can do another video if you guys want me to do another video let me know and i'll take you through how i actually make components that i'm going to build off of this method that i just showed you is a fast way to show the client what you have in mind what it's going to look like especially if it's your own design it does a few things one it protects you because you're showing the dimensions and the customer is approving that. And secondly, it gives you kind of an edge and like kind of takes it to the next level because there are not a lot of people that go through this. And that was just kind of my method to show you that this can be done really fast if you aren't paying a ton of attention to small details. Like they don't necessarily need to, this doesn't need to work yet. You need to get an approval, you need to get a deposit, you need to get paid, and then from there, if I get the job, I get a deposit, I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna actually make these components and then I'm gonna build off of it. Yeah, so that's it. I um, hope you liked the video and I hope it helped. Let me know if you need to see anything else. Leave comments if you have questions or suggestions because there's probably faster ways to do this. All right, what's up guys? I got something good for you here. This episode is brought to you by SeatGeek. It's an awesome app that takes the confusion out of buying tickets. If you're the type of person that likes to go to basketball games, football games, concerts, comedy shows, all of that has been condensed into one app. They make it really easy for you to buy tickets. They rate them zero to 100, so you know if you're getting a good deal. At checkout, make sure you use promo code William Douglas, and it's gonna save you $20 on your first purchase. We just built a bed, man. Digital bed. Now, now you can 3D print this um, and be done with it. Are we at that point yet where we can 3D print beds? People can just buy the file from you. <laughs>